Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to a video and today we're going to be doing a build of an iFlight quad here using almost completely iFlight components. So just starting with the frame, you can see I have it unassembled here. This is actually the brand new Dove V3 and I have this unassembled because of the way there's no extra cutouts to mount in these stacks. Um, I need to mount the stack before I screw this thing together so after I mount the screw or the arms on I won't be able to mount the stack um, because they do share a screw here. The 30 by 30 and then the 20 by 20 I can't get through if there's two plates in the way um, with the driver since there's no large cutout so I have to build the arms build the stack and then put it together but it shouldn't be any harder just a little different than I'm used to. For the motors we're going to be using the new iFlight Sing 2207 uh, 1800 kV. There's, these are the eco motors so these things are only about $14 and they look absolutely fantastic and let's just real quick compare to the regular Sing motors which are about $23-$24 um, and what is different, this is 2207, this is 2306, but they make both. The main differences are the shaft on the Eco motor is a hardened steel shaft, and this one is a titanium shaft. The windings are a little bit better on the regular Sing, and they're a little bit cheaper on the Eco, but definitely not bad. And take a look at the bottom, pretty similar overall. The, the Eco is missing this little um, metal retainer at the bottom there, but perfectly fine. I've never had any trouble um, with the wires going up in the motor. The bearing in the Eco is a little bit cheaper, but overall it should be a really nice motor and it feels great in the hands. And for only $14, I think it is a fantastic option. So for the camera, I'm using the Foxier Predator Nano. You can see I have this little housing that I put on it to adjust it back to micro size. So this will be interesting to see how this performs. Receiver, I'll be using a TBS Crossfire Nano with the Immortal T. Pretty standard there. And then for the stack, this is it. <laughs> this is the tiny, tiny little iFlight Sussex uh, F7 stack. Let me get this out. This is the newest version. So if you see from the ESC to the flight controller, we have the ESC 20x26S on the bottom. I believe this is the newest version. Um, it has the pads instead of the holes in there. So I think that's why this is the newest one. Um, it has a connector from the flight controller to the ESC, not pin, so that is nice. And then the VTX on top here, a little by 20 by 20, 200 milliwatt VTX with MMCX. Smart audio, of course, built in. Um, that is pinned to the flight controller. So if you're not going to use that, you can easily remove that. But the ESC to um, flight controller is with a wire harness, so that is awesome. Little F7 flight controller ESC VTX stack. This thing is incredible. And then I can just whoop, put the little receiver on there. This thing is all the electronics. Extremely small, extremely light. This is going to make a very lightweight build, probably somewhere around 260 grams. I'm not exactly sure how much the frame weighs. With this stack just being so small, we're saving a ton of weight there. So the stack also comes with a little capacitor, an MMCX straight to whip antenna, an XT30 <laughs> meant for micros, but we're not going to be using that. This is going to be a full-on racer. And then we have the cables to connect different things with the cameras. You can see there's uh, various other plugs on here. You don't have to solder everything, which is nice. And then here's the little cable to connect the ESC. So that's pretty much all the parts for this build. Let's go ahead and start assembling the motors onto the arms and then screwing in the stack to the frame and then soldering everything up. But this should be a pretty easy and simple, straightforward build. Um, just do this stack. This thing is just all integrated in one piece. You don't have to worry about any setup. It's just all going to work together. Very, very nice. Okay, so the motors do come with a lock nut and screws, of course. Very nice thing about the screws is that they are actually um, M. They use the 2 mil driver, not the 2.5, and they are button head, not cap head. I am a big fan of that. Um, I find these screws a lot nicer, and they do. If I can show it here, you see that blue. Uh, it does have Loctite pre-installed, which is extremely, extremely welcome. The only thing I don't like about the screws is that they're 6 millimeter and not 7 millimeter. Um, but you know that's not a huge deal. Just with these five millimeter arms on typical race frames, you're only getting about one, one and a half millimeter sticking up into the motor. But if you use all four screws, which I will be on this build, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. I've never really had any come out, especially using the Loctite. So with these arms, you're just gonna be a little bit careful when you're putting them on because this is gonna go into the center of the body here. Um, these two are gonna butt up against each other like that. So don't put the motor on this side and put another one on this side and you're gonna, you can have to flop, swap them over. So just make sure you take a second to think about it before you put these guys on. Okay, there's all four screws. Went in real nice, so much quicker to not have to put in the Loctite by yourself. Just tighten those down pretty decently. Don't strip anything. And there is the first motor mount on the arms. I was going to do race wire on these, but since the arms are pretty short and very thin, 
um, as well as this is going to be a really lightweight build overall. I know it's not any heavier to do race wire, but I am a bit pressed on time when filming this. There's a high chance I'll actually be using this at a race very, very soon, maybe before this video comes out. I'm just going to leave the um, wires as is and solder directly to the stack, and then put the, um, the lock nut on so you don't lose that. So all four motors are mounted on their arms, and I just wanted to pause and point out a quick note. First of all, let's just take a look at this gorgeous 20x26 SESC by itself. Look at that thing. Very, very nice. So I'm finally going to go ahead and start assembling things. So I got the frame pretty much all assembled here. The only thing left would be to um, insert the camera plates and top plate, but that we can save for later, obviously. Now I'm going to solder up the motors. It should be one of the very few things we actually have to solder on this build um, because of this awesome little stack. So let me go ahead and zoom in here. I'm going to go ahead and pre-tin the board. And now I'm using some Kester 6337 um, solder here, and I'm at 350 degrees Celsius using a Yehua 898D plus iron bench station thing, SMG, SMD rework station is what they call it. Um, I love, love this iron and station. Works great for about 70, 50, 70 or 50 bucks ish. Don't remember what the price is. Out of all the parts on this 6S build, however, this uh, 20 by 20 ESC is probably the thing I'm most excited for. Um, it's just so small and it looks really high quality, um, and it sits really low to the standoffs, or really low on the stack here, which is a big thing. The other new ones coming out with heat sinks are a little bit taller footprint, so really a fan of how this is looking so far, and hopefully it holds up to this high KV uh, large motor abuse. So since we're not using race wire, I'm just going to run the motor wires straight down. I'm going to go ahead and zip tie these, actually. So I'm just going to go ahead and put one zip tie at the end of the arm here. Off. And then since this is a BLHOE 32 ESC, or any modern ESC and motor, um, we can just solder the wires straight up to the ESC however we want. We don't have to... Um, worry about orientation or which one goes where. So I'm just going to do my best to um, kind of solder these as an angle. This outer one here, I want it to be straight coming off um, the end pretty much. And make sure you do leave a little bit of slack so that way in a crash something has to move, it can. Um, and then these ones coming out going to need a little bit of an angle. Then we can come in with the solder and get these tinned up. Um, it's a good idea to do it away from the board so extra solder balls don't splatter on the electronics, so be wary of that. Uh, make sure it flows all the way through. There we go, and I'm going to come in with my terrible rusty pair of pliers. Um, this is kind of hard to do with the camera in the way, but let's see if I can get this lined up. That one's... Okay, it's a little bit off camera. I'll probably come clean these up. I can't. It's so hard. These joints are real small. Um, so hard to do with the camera in the way. And there's three. There we go. Just imagine those are nice clean joints. I'll touch them up in just a second when I finish the other three motors. Right, so I've cleaned up the solder joints and made some progress on the build. Was kind of just um, feeling out how things are going to fit in here. I was thinking of putting the crossfire antenna here and running the antenna up under here, turning the crossfire this way, heat shrinking it and zip tying it to the top here since there is um, there is room underneath the top plate and that leaves the front completely free for the camera. But let's just sort of take the stack off piece by piece so the VTX just pins onto the flight controller so we have no wiring to do there. And then for the receiver up here for the crossfire, this is where I'm going to be wiring it. Hopefully, if this will focus, you can see we have RX3, TX3, ground, and 5 volts. When you have the four in a row like that, that's a free UR and 5 volt power, which is a great place to um, take your receiver from, whether it be Crossfire or uh, SBUS or IBUS. And since this is an F7 flight controller, it does automatic serial inversion um, or D inversion. <laughs> 
Um, so it doesn't matter if you're using Crossfire or SBUS, the inverted signal, it'll auto detect that. So that is nice. You can see I just plugged in the camera. I found this um, cable that comes with the flag controller. It's quite long, but I'm just going to wrap it up and that'll fit in there. Just to try to do as little soldering as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and solder these wires that come with the Crossfire receiver um, to these pads over here. So I'm just going to use yellow for RX, and this will be UART3 that we enable serial on. And there is white for the TX, and then let's get, let's see, is it ground? Yep, next is ground. There we go, and last we have 5 volts. Now one of these connectors on here probably does output these signals that you can see this cable it comes with actually comes with a servo lead, which is usually for plug into receiver, but the plug also has, probably you can't see it because um, we're zoomed in, but it also has a fourth output there just not pinned in. Um, so we could be using that, but I'm just going to solder here. Um, it's really easy. And I know exactly where I'm pulling from. So there we go. That is done. See just those four wires and running them across the board here because of the way I'm going to mount the crossfire receiver on top. I'm going to pull these underneath and sort of just loop them up around. So I'm going to give a bend something like this and the receiver should be about there. It should be more than enough slack. And once we solder this, that should be the very last thing. And just a quick note on the um, VTX here. I actually did go ahead and uh, reinforce the MMCX connector with just some solder here. This is all one big ground plane to help dissipate heat. Um, as well as you can see, here's the different power outputs that it does. Pit mode, 25 milliwatts, 100, 200, 400, and 500. So that's nice. And here is everything broken out if you're using this VTX, not with this flight controller, so you're not using these pins. Very, very handy. But I just went ahead and reinforced the MMCX, so that's going to be really strong in there. So I'm going to go ahead and start finishing up this smaller wiring, and I'll overview what I've done. As I mentioned, it's harder to do this smaller soldering on camera. Okay, so we're just about finished up here, and if you noticed earlier, I did not include the little capacitor that it comes with, the little 35 volt, 220 microfarad. Um, I just didn't really know where I was going to put it yet. Um, I thought it'd be easier if I waited till the end, and as you can see, I put the XT60 on and uh, zip tied it to the side standoff. So I think if I take this capacitor and sort of just um, put it right here in this space next to this standoff, um, cut these legs shorter and put a little bit of wire extension right to the main battery pads there and then just zip tie around this standoff. I think that'll be a good position for it. All right, there we go. The build is done. I apologize for doing a lot of this off camera, but it was pretty much boring stuff that's just, you know, pretty standards. Putting in a couple screws, plugging in some things, nothing really difficult. The only thing I had to solder on this entire build was the Crossfire receiver and the motors to the ESCs. Everything else just plugged straight in. You can see in the back, there's the capacitor I was talking about. I soldered it to um, the battery leads there and then put a zip tie around it. That thing is pretty solid there. Here's the 3D print for the back that holds the little iFlight antenna here. And then obviously the camera just screws into um, the plates up here and slots into the top plate. And then I put the crossfire down on the arm here instead of the center. Just thought it would work better this way. Uh, and then use two zip ties. And yeah, should be perfectly good there. So not the cleanest build overall, just because I didn't route the motor wires underneath the flight controller. But with this 20x20 EC, you really can't. Um, it doesn't make sense on 20 by 20 anyways. It's just so small. Might as well go here. So it doesn't look as nice. But overall, very blacked out looking design with the camera, motors, frame. Everything is black there so it looks pretty nice let's go ahead and get a weight on this guy so it weighs about 273 so a little bit heavier than i expected but the frame is pretty darn beefy it's very stiff and the motors are 2207 they're 33 gram motors so so definitely not super light but about 15 20 grams lighter than my normal race setups and that is just due to this stack is just absolutely tiny that's the 20 by 20 definitely saves some weight there and then if you want to weight with props, just add 20 grams. So it's about 290, 300 grams, uh, depending on what prop you use, dry weight for this guy. And then another 5 grams for a battery strap, which you can just fit one underneath the stack or one underneath the um, 
mid plate here and I need to put a little piece of foam on there. Mine did not come with it. However, once again, I think this frame is unreleased. So that's just pretty much going to sum up the build overview video. <laughs> once again, using this stack was just so dead simple. Uh, frame's not too bad. I definitely don't like it as much as my own custom frame. <laughs> Obviously, um, I designed my frame like how I did for a reason. You can only fit one battery strap through here unless you stack them, so you can't really double strap. But overall, it is extremely stiff and for only like 36 bucks, it is definitely not a bad option for racing. It should be pretty durable. So there'll be links down in the description below to all the parts used, and I'm sure I'll post some line of sight or race footage or both um, coming soon with this guy. Really excited to see how the 20x20 stack holds up on 6S2207 1800 KV. Very powerful setup. There will also be a link in the description to my Patreon if you wish to help support the channel and these types of videos. I do a giveaway once a month of either motors or quad or ESC. I pick something out and give it away to my Patreon subscribers. So there's links to that in the description. Those giveaways are held through Discord. So yep, yeah, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.